If you visit the Block House in Mansfield today, you'll be in a quiet park where you can feel safe. But if you had been there when it was originally built, the feeling would be danger and panic. Because Mansfield was just a clearing in the wilderness then, and though the maps showed lines of civilization coming, in 1812 the whole state was a vast forest. And of all the settlements, Mansfield stood alone on the edge to face the War of 1812. They'd all heard stories of massacre and bloodshed, and they knew the British were supplying the tribes with weapons. So when the United States declared war on England, the settlers around Mansfield sent a petition to the governor asking for help. The army was building forts in the wilderness for warfare, but our little town needed something where families could have a safe place to gather. So in September, a company of a hundred soldiers from Coshocton came and built two blockhouses on the square in Mansfield. The first one was put up quickly, made of logs that were still round. But they took their time with the second one, and the logs were hewn to fit together more securely and last longer. The military design included an overhang to make the walls hard to climb and create a catwalk instead of a second floor. In case of attack, the people could defend themselves, because everyone was very nervous about any sound in the woods and expected attack any day, especially after they heard of the battle 12 miles away at Copas Hill. Then, one afternoon, they found Levi Jones scalped in the woods on Diamond Street. The alarm was sounded, and everyone ran to the blockhouse, afraid for their lives and feeling vulnerable. So, one Mansfielder volunteered to run to the nearest army post, 26 miles away, to get help. History has remembered him as Johnny Appleseed, and as a true American hero, he lives on today in popular culture, and even around the world, for his courage and kindness. When they put him on a stamp, there was an apple behind him, but it could have just as rightly been the blockhouse that always stands to symbolize safety and security. After the crisis was over, the blockhouse was the only public building, so it became the Richland County Courthouse and Jail, and in between times it was used as a classroom for the town's first school, and on Sundays was the first church in Mansfield. In 1816, the blockhouse was auctioned off for $56 and moved to Second Street as two separate buildings, and then forgotten as the town grew from a country village to an industrial city. When Mansfield reached 100 years, they wanted to bring back the blockhouse as the cornerstone of the city's history. But they found that the top half was beyond repair. So they located another pioneer log cabin to replace the logs. And for two years during the centennial celebration, the little original courthouse stood next to the modern one to show how far the city had come. Then one day when there was snow on the ground, it was loaded onto a sled and hauled to its permanent location at South Park, where it was a tourist attraction for 20 years, till the scouts of Troop 6 moved in and made a name for themselves not only in Mansfield but all over the country as the Blockhouse Troop, because even at a national jamboree it was easily recognizable. In fact, the Blockhouse became an icon of Mansfield itself. And when a bank used it as their logo, they even built one of their branches to look like a blockhouse. It's been rendered by generations of artists in paintings, in stained glass, even carved in chocolate, and anywhere that our history needs a symbol. So when the city's 200th birthday came to revisit our heritage once again, it was time to take a closer look at the old pioneer treasure that was cracking under the weight of 200 years. Plans were drawn for a total renovation, and then the building was taken apart, log by log, and stored indoors so that each log could be examined closely for repairs or replacement. A new foundation was built on higher ground made of native pink sandstone, and as the building was going up piece by piece, some new oak logs were hewn by hand in the original old-fashioned manner and fitted up to make the place as solid as it was in 1812. Most of the work was accomplished by professionals who were excited to preserve Ohio's only authentic wooden relic from 1812. 
But once the walls were in place, the rest of the work was done by volunteers. To top off the blockhouse project called for wooden shingles, lots of them. And it was the community who answered the call. For months, people of all ages, most of them with no woodworking skills, came to the blockhouse and learned how to rive boards to make shakes for the roof. Everyone got to sign their work, and when they were nailed in place, all of those people became a part of our history and our future. The old logs got a new color of stain to match weathered wood, but there are logs from three different constructions there, and it's not hard to tell them apart. The newest logs are placed throughout the building, but if you want to find the original logs, just look at the corners, because the ones narrowest at the ends are the oldest. When those trees were cut in 1812, they were already more than 300 years old. So today, the original logs are over 500 years old. Touch those logs and you connect with American history. Because those trees were standing when Columbus was on his way to America. They were in the square when Washington crossed the Delaware. And in 1812, they were cut during the war that gave us the Star Spangled Banner and have survived since the flag had only 15 stars. So, the next time you see those bombs bursting in air and you're feeling proud to be an American, you will know that you have connected to Mansfield's American history.